Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Have you ever wondered uh, how long you should make your variable names? You know, or given much thought to the types of things you're going to use, the words or letters you're going to use to name your variables. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally get that. Um, but today we'll cover some uh, pros and cons of actually uh, making short versus long variable names. All right, let's at it. Hey everyone, it's Joe Lyons here in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie Stuke here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And uh, and today, as we lose to, we're, we're going to be talking about uh, some of the pros and cons of, you know, how you name your variables. Um, let's start off with with some of the benefits of short names, right? And when I say short names, I don't know if I should even be saving names because often it's like one letter. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's really weird that that you choose to do that. I, I get that you can get software to do it for you to, to save space and stuff like that. But, but when you're actually coding, uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I see that often enough. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when I, when I use the term variable, I want to be you know clear, it really could be like a function name or a, like a go sub label, or if you're iterating over a, a, an object, like the four, you know, K and V instead of using, you know, full words there, right. Using letters. And, that's one of the places where I see a lot of times a lot of developers will put in letters there, you know, for A, comma B in C, and then they go one level, you know, the next one for B and D, comma, and and, and yeah, you know, and this is where we were we were talking about the pros. The pros is I'm I'm done in a half a second, right? I, I literally don't have to think about it, which I don't know if that's actually a pro. It seems like a pro at first. Yeah, yeah. Within the time used on typing, if if you're using it on a big piece of code where you reuse that K or that V or whatever multiple times, so instead of typing out the word value, value or whatever it might be, yeah, you you'll maybe save who knows how many uh, keystrokes, but but still, yeah. If if you then have a nested loop or a nested loop in that nested loop and you keep on with these uh, single letter things, um, it's hard to know. Yeah, um, but one thing, you know, and we have a list, believe it or not, that we're actually working from, but I hadn't put my finger on it until you just said it, Jackie. Depending on what editor you know, or IDE you're using, you know, if your IDE is offering up previously used variables, that's where kind of what you just said can go out the window also, right? Because um, it will assist you and you know that, hey, this variable exists. You don't have to type out the whole thing, right? So it'll, it'll auto assist um, and, and it just makes it easier to have a full word there and you're not having to retype it over and over and over. Now, if you're using Notepad, then yeah, that would, you know, it could be onerous to keep typing a long variable name and, and you might misspell it versus you're not going to spell a letter. It might also depend on, on uh, where you are if you're using a scripting language like a hotkey or something like that, where uh, at least in the beginning, you're not in a confined space, you're in the global area. And then you would actually be limited in which variable names you would be able to use if you only had 26 of them to, to go with. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, now, another one in this... We, Jackie was actually telling me the story, but um, he, he had run into it the other day where he, uh, he, he, he is disciplined and he uses, often uses long variable names. And when he did it, um, explain it, Jackie, like the, the, the word flow like ran off, what, what is it, probably around 80 characters, maybe a little more on, you know, that'll fit with on your, with your screen without having to scroll sideways? Yeah, it, it just dawned on me because I, I needed to, to, uh type out an entire object and it, it had uh, quite a lot of um, uh, entries in it and because I wanted to just keep it on a single line instead of doing all kinds of stuff um, I ended up ending way outside of my screen and couldn't see any other uh, code when when I typed it finished uh, sure enough if I had used shorter uh, variable names I wouldn't have ended that far uh, to the right, but but yeah, it 
it, it will be easier if you keep your variable names short, if you have to retype them often, or if you need to use them in a big expression on a single line or something like that, yeah. You know, that, which actually it's, um, I, I, I ran into this just the other day, I was actually doing some SQL work and uh, the person I was working with didn't understand, they, they didn't know what a, an alias was. And, you know, like in SQL stuff, boy, I'll tell you, have, being able to create an alias is really helpful. However, again, an alias doesn't have to just be one letter, right? Like, which a lot of people do. You use two or three, go crazy, right? Um, yeah. and it, <laughs> crazy. it really can help you uh, remember what it is that that actually is a reference to. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if people often do that, but you might also be able to run into the Mac the length of an expression. Uh, if, if you keep using very long variable names, uh, sure enough, you could end up uh, running out of characters for the stuff that you're doing. I'm not sure if that's something that happens often. I've not encountered it myself, but it is a possibility. And it's the same with continued sections and other things like that, where you actually have limit on what you can uh, keep and one let go right yeah yeah and um i i have on occasion run into issues where i'm concatenating a lot of stuff together that are variables and stuff but and, and i've run into it but it's it's super rare but um it anyway we'll we'll get into the the difference because some we're going to touch on the pros here in a second uh but the next one the last one that i had for uh, uh short names was you're kind of, and it's it, it, it's a weird thought, but you're kind of obfuscating your code. You know, you're keeping it where it's it's purposely hard to follow, which might be something you like, um, depending on you know where where the source code is going to be, you know, who's going to have access to it. You, you might like that. Yeah, like with the tenorary operator or, or tenorary expression or something like that. It 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 could be nice, and yeah obfuscation of the code might also make sense with an open uh, language and stuff like that where okay why should it be easy to read it it's removing white space it's removing comments and all that stuff if you're compiling it and if you also make all your variable names very very obscure yeah you you don't need to run an obfuscation thing on it afterwards because yeah the person trying to figure out what's happening will be using so much time on it that it's probably not worth it. So, yeah. You know, and I, I did think of one other one um, with it's in, in it's, it's a ridiculous one nowadays, right? But um, 30 years ago, it wasn't so ridiculous. Uh, you know, like memory space, like you, you, or even byte space, like downloading stuff from the internet, right? And just the size of a file, it'll be slightly bigger if you use long variable names. Right, slightly. Yeah, and, and that's also why uh, JavaScript and stuff like that actually does this. I don't even remember what it's called, but it actually shortens the code and just makes up unique variable names for everything. Mm -hmm. uh, one letter ones if you can, just exactly to make the mm -hmm. package sent over uh, the internet as small as absolutely possible because mm -hmm. yeah, you could actually save a few milliseconds or whatever. And yep. yeah. And uh, <laughs> I know that when locating a, a new website or something like that, it, it, I, I would like it to just blink up as soon as I click the button. Yeah, I need that visual feedback that I click the link and I need the page to start loading pretty quickly to keep interest if it becomes a few seconds, maybe four or five seconds long, I, I might be contemplating just clicking back and finding something else. So sure enough, timing wise, stuff like that can be important. Yeah, and, and in the old days where we actually put stuff on floppy disks, if you even know what that is, um, you know, that was that 1.44 uh, megs, it was tough. Right, like it, it, yeah. was a, it was a battle um, before thumb drives were even, you know, a thing and cheap. Um, it was, it was a pain. Thumb drives, there weren't even USB, so right, yeah, yeah fair enough, yeah. 
Um, okay, let's switch over now to the benefits of having long names. Uh, Jackie, why don't you go ahead and start off? Yeah, it's it's easy for you to understand what your variable is holding or doing or used for. It's easy for yourself. That to me is really a big benefit. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's that's to me making it easy for myself. That that really weighs a lot. And sure enough, I've I've happened where I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll type that, and then I'm. But I use copy pasting so much, and if uh, my IDE even suggests prior variable names, I I very rarely actually have to type the long variable names very often. So it making it easier for myself. That's that's the point. Yeah, and actually with that auto assist, it, um, it, it, in a lot of ways, it makes sure when you use the auto assist as opposed to typing it out, it, it, it helps you make sure that there's not a typo that you messed up and misspelled the variable name, right? So I'm a big believer in either copy and paste or to use the auto assist because I, I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, you could say that that would be a negative of a long variable name, the, the chance of misspelling it. But again, it depends if, if I'm spelling words I'm not a great speller, so I could actually spell the words wrong, and I've done so before, and that will mess me up at a later point because, hey, this was what I called it. But again, if you use the tools available, you copy and paste it, uh, or you use the IDE to, and I had that in, in a project not too long ago where in the entire project, I'd actually spelled it wrong because I just reused yeah. the variable name, so yeah. Um, and actually, the uh, I'm going to add on to your original one of it makes it easier for you to understand um, with just the, the point of there's one when you're doing the work right then and there, but how often have we come back to our own work, you know, a week later, six weeks later, six months later, and you try to pick up something that you didn't give them nice long names and holy cow, like one is you're mad at yourself, right? Cause you're like, who wrote this? Oh, I wrote it. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, it takes you three, four times as long to get to grasp it, to understand it. Right. Even on your own code. And like, that's what I, I can see when it's someone else's code, when it's your own code, you'd think, Oh, I can pick this up. I, I wrote it. It'll be easy. It, it's not, it's amazing how much the problem is we work on a lot of different things, right? And, and you only keep so much in your head and you come back into it and it just takes you a long time to figure out what was going on, even on your own stuff. Yeah, and I'd say uh, one of the things I read pretty early on in, in my learning was to remember to comment your code. And, and I was beating myself up for not commenting my own code enough and, um, Okay, I, I do comment, but maybe not as much as might be needed. But at least I have long variable names. So in right. essence, I do and variable names, long, long labels, long function names, long whatever I can think of. I'll make it as long as I, or still keeping it within reason, right? But yeah, trying to actually just tell myself what I'm doing instead of just calling it something obscure um, no absolutely um and, and um what i was gonna say also is it gets back to earlier i mentioned um it helps me you know when i come back to something later but there's also the big one if you're trying if you're posting it to a forum to share with other people right like it, why would you make things hard for other people to pick up and understand and when you, you know, at least when you write it yourself, often it's easier to pick back up. But when you're trying to read something from someone else and they used one letter abbreviations, that's a lot of crap to keep in your head of this letter here means that, okay, now this is that. And you're, as you're learning, you know, the function or whatever it is, it's, wow, is it, it's draining, I guess is the easiest way to put it. It's you're <laughs> yeah. mentally tasking, you're using so many more resources to make that association in your head. Yeah, uh, but as I take other examples from, from what we usually do, um, the, the code that we might use. Like if, if you have, um, I don't know, GDI plus or something like that, 
where the things are actually called bitmap from screen or update layered window, or it's actually a pretty long function name, right? It, it actually has that meaning built into it. And to me, that just makes a lot of sense. And why not do the same thing with your variables? And of course, depending on whichever setting it is, if, if you're in the confined space of a function that, that returns pretty quickly, you, you can sure enough keep your variables pretty short. But when you're doing, let's say a win get uh, pose or something, when you actually get to the parameter that holds like the, the, the width and the height and stuff like that, why keep it to a W and an H? when you could actually write out width and height and thereby know in all the exactly. lines that come after it, right. uh, what those variables are. And again, if it's a short function, it might not be an issue, but if it becomes a longer one, why, why would you want to use mental energy on remembering what W and H and B and V and whatever letters you choose to use for other things. Like, uh, I, what was it that OBM was holding? Or, oh, I had that HBM variable that had, and there was also that HDC variable. You know, all of those different ones that you could choose to call them instead of actually calling them uh, something that you would be able to read back afterwards. You know, a, a great, ex right when you were saying that, it reminded me of Guarble, I think is the name of the author. And I'm not putting his code down, right? But he has this notify function that you can display these notifications. Um, and I've used, I use it for a long time up until not too long ago when Mayshrift rewrote it and did something different with it. But he changed it where he used full words of the thing. It'd be like title, you know, this, you know, titles, font size, you know, and then and it was the they meant something versus in in the stuff from Garble, it was like T H and T F and it, it was like I don't know what these letters mean. Like I you know I have to go look them up. But to your point, when they actually explain what they mean, you know it's so easy. And I think it fosters you memorizing, you know, very quickly. Oh yeah, I, I you know. Uh, or, or if I can't find, if I don't know where it is, I don't have to try to track down everywhere. I can search for like part of the word with, oh, oh, here, look, here it's being used. Okay, now I have a, you know, I can find it. It's, you know, I, I pick it up really quickly. Yeah, and being able to associate what the code does with the word would make much more sense for you because the word already, already has meaning for you. So you can associate what it's doing in specific cases with other things. So to me, that, that makes a lot more sense that a three letter abbreviation or whatever you use to, to try and, and make your variable names actually using words. It just makes it so much easier that, yeah, yep. brown fox or whatever uh, actually holds the color of an object or whatever it might be. It just makes it much more easy than than using uh, BF as as the variable name in that case. Right. But, yeah. So to summarize, you know, we we talked about some of the benefits of the short names, and part of them were kind of tongue in cheek. Like, there are they really benefits? Um, Jackie, before we started recording this, kind of mentioned after we did these and wrote them out. He's like, you know, these the benefits when you really if you were to weight these. Like, yeah, these, these, you know, it's, you know, it's easy to type it. I get it done in one second because it's one letter. It, you know, how important is that? Like compared to the other things, easy to remember, easy to, to, to learn, easy to, um, for other people to pick up um, and not so mentally draining. Like, like there's really no comparison. So I think we had a really good discussion here about why you should give your variables long names. Yeah. And I know we talked about it some other day that, yeah, sure enough, if you're hard, to type the code at a specific speed, it might be quicker for you to just type those very, very short uh, variable names or very, very short function stuff and stuff like that. But in, in a big enough environment that might work, but 
to me, if, if I needed to go back and revise that because a customer or whoever I wrote it for actually wanted something to be changed, I would have lost that entire advantage at that point. Well, I, I was laughing, Jackie, because I was gonna I was gonna suggest, or you could have a hot spring, you know, that you you know you type a couple letters and it puts in the long name of your variable for you, right? So it, it's still you know, it's a best of both worlds. But um, that was another one uh, um, we touched on was if you give your variables long names instead of short names, yeah, it takes you a little more time up front. But when do you earn back? If we would like to do it, when do you earn back that time you took? you earn that back the very second, even while you're doing it, right? While you're coding in it, it's already done. You don't have to say, I gotta read it three times or it's gotta be used. It's it's during the instance that you're using it, just because it's easier for you to keep in your head of what you're doing. It pays for itself right then and there. It's not something that you have to count it. Well, you know, five versions down, this will be worth it. No, that's when it really helps. No, it helps right then. Yeah, yeah. But to me, it's like, we can probably keep talking about this for a long time, Joe, but I think that's that's about some of our points of, of what we see as benefits of one and benefits of the other. Yeah. So if, if, if you guys disagree, or if you have a preference, like, you know, add, add some comments below to tell us what, you know, what do you think? Like what, and if you have any sort of rule of thumb of how many characters, like minimum or maximum that you go, it'd be, it'd be very interesting if, if you guys actually have you know, I, I doubt anyone has a restriction built into what they do, but, um, you know, I, I like to have at least three letters um, and then I don't think I have a max. It, it, and I know I've seen Jackie's, trust me, he doesn't have a max. So. No, no, I try to not have a max. And uh, also if, if, yeah, you like what we talked about, let us know how are we, way you can reach us like this or uh, review us or whatever you want to do. That would be great. Yeah. Or, or share, um, or send us billions of dollars. We're, we're open to that too. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thanks guys. Yeah, bye. Bye. If you enjoyed that episode of the Automators Podcast, you might also like this one. Imagine a perfect world where before you write one line of code, you get to do whatever you want. Today, we're gonna cover nine basic points of things that you should do before you write one line of code. Yeah. What to do before you write your program, that, that's a great topic. Yeah, so if you think about it, I mean, that's, we want to get to the, what things should you do before you write any code, right? What should you get yourself going, you know, lay out what you're going to do. We're covering nine separate points today in today's podcast. Mm -hmm.